dream. I'll give you a 10% discount if someone can tell me that reference in the comments. Okay, so it is a wonderful Monday morning. Uh, as you can see, I'm on the road, already on the interstates. Uh, today we're going to be potentially bringing home quite a few animals. Uh, there's somebody who's moving to Houston, Texas, and he's needing to rehome his entire reptile collection. Um, it looks like most of it is going to be in pretty good condition, which is nice. Uh, but there's a few questionable things, uh, which I'll get to in a little bit. But um, we could be potentially taking home as many as 11 animals today, which would be pretty rad, uh, but also a lot of animals. Uh, so I'm really excited, and there's hopefully going to be some really exciting species uh, there as well. And I missed my exit. This is why you don't do road trip videos at the same time as you're actually trying to road trip. One animal that I want to highlight that I'm specifically excited about is uh, there's supposedly a pretty big BCI there. He claims it's a nine foot BCI. Uh, in my experience, that means it's probably gonna be like a six or seven foot BCI, but still a decently sized animal. But what's interesting about this boa is uh, it's in a big six foot enclosure, which I may or may not be getting, I'm not sure if I'll be taking that home or not. Uh, but he said the doors need replacing. So I texted him back, I said, what, what about them needs replacing? Did they break or something? He goes, yeah, they were glass doors and she busted right through them. Meaning that the, the snake broke through the glass doors. And I said, oh man, is she okay? I mean, glass can be sharp. And he goes, LOL, yeah, she has a big gash on her head, but she is fine. I'm just gonna repeat that again. LOL, yeah, she has a big gash on her head, but she is fine. Uh, now it is possible that it actually is pretty minor, and it's just like a little little glaze, but you know, we're talking about broken glass. Cuts from glass can be really gnarly, so. It's one of the things where I just don't know. I just can send a closer photo, and it was just like a really blurry, crappy one. I'll put it up on the screen right now. Uh, so yeah. We shall see what this is all about. Regardless, it does sound like an animal that does need some help. So uh, if I am able to take it in, I definitely will. Um, and yeah, we're gonna see what it's like in just a few minutes. So I think I just pulled in uh, some kind of an apartment complex looks like. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and find out which one he's in and then we can uh, start loading up this van with reptiles. We are empty right now, which is awesome. So, uh, so we pulled it off. There's the 11 animals of all different shapes and sizes and species and family. We got a full van. The saving grace is uh, it's saving some, saving some animals today. This is crazy. So we did end up getting that boa I was talking about uh, with the gash. It, it's, a, it's a pretty nasty gash. It's pretty gnarly. It doesn't look like it went deep enough to really, you know, hit any of her bones or damage her skull or do anything crazy like that. Uh, but it, it, it's definitely, definitely some damage, definitely something that's going to need to be addressed. Because it does seem to be limited to a uh, flesh wound and not a super deep flesh wound, uh, I may be able to get away without actually getting the vet involved. But of course, um, now that I've taken on that animal, if that's where it needs to go, then that's where it needs to go. If you guys are curious, uh, I'm by no means a vet or close to a vet myself. Uh, but I did go through uh, a two-year certificate in animal care and management, um, which essentially certifies me to be a veterinary assistant. So again, it does not make me a vet, does not make me a DVM, but it does mean that I have a good bit of experience with uh, aseptic technique and at least applying uh, certain treatments that would be prescribed uh, by a vet, which it definitely does feel good to have a little bit of equipment in that in that area, just to feel a little bit equipped to handle some of these uh, some of these messier cases. When, uh, when, when we get home, we can pull everything out of the car and I can get, show you guys uh, in detail kind of all the animals uh, that we got as well as all the uh, enclosures and random supplies. But first, you guys are gonna get a little bit of an inside look into some of the inner inner cogs of Radiant Reptilia. 
uh, because our first stop is uh, the FedEx Ship Center. We've got a leopard gecko uh, that's going out to her new home. Uh, so yeah, that's where we're headed now. Before I do anything, I'm just gonna make sure to get my hands uh, sanitized just with some hand sanitizer just because I have been handling a whole bunch of fresh uh, animals that came in and while I don't think any of them are necessarily carrying diseases I don't want to take that risk especially with an animal going out to a fresh customer so I'm really gonna lather up in that stuff um, fun fact that's the only thing I'm allowed to clean my hands in with this cast which is pretty great here she is is she not just a gorgeous gecko very very strong markings uh, I think you this might be what you would consider a bold leopard gecko with those very very strong black markings uh, they're not small spots they're large spots it kind of looks like uh, someone made them in a sharpie this little girl's going all the way to New York City uh, so she's gonna be living it up in the big city which is awesome One, she was riding with the cast is fun. Wow, oh, look at 12 year old. One leopard gecko, gee whiz, Ethan, that handwriting. What a wreck. And then the last thing we'll need is just the address to go in there, which I'm obviously not gonna show you that. got a normal ball python. This is a 2018 ball python. This is actually the second 2018 ball python we have in right now. Uh, the first one being the yellow belly. Um, this one's a little bit older, so my guess is he was a very, very early 2018, whereas the yellow belly was a later to mid uh, 2018 hatchling. Uh, pretty good condition. Uh, needs to pack on just a little bit of weight. He's just slightly on the slimmer side uh, for my taste. Uh, and then healthy already go up on the site. Doesn't seem to be anything wrong with him. Seems very friendly. Feeding might be an adjustment because I believe he was feeding everybody except for the boa and one other snake uh, live rodents, so uh, that may be a challenge. But if it is a challenge, and that's a video topic, it's definitely something I've tackled before and I'm, uh, I'm ready to tackle it again. So uh, yeah, not too much to see here, just a, another normal ball python. So many random things in this, in this haul. This is like something he made out of foam. Uh, I don't know. He said I could have it along with everything else. It's not too bad, honestly. Uh, if I fix the leg, it'll be usable. A bearded dragon would actually probably take a good advantage of this as a basking perch, so uh, that's kind of cool. I just love the fact that I always get weird and random reptile supplies that I never thought I would own or never really thought I needed, but um, who knows? They might come in handy one day. Next up, uh, we have this pair of crested geckos, uh, both male crested geckos, and they came with this, I guess it's like a 30 gallon, it's like one of those ones where it's got the base of the size of a 20 gallon, uh, but the height is different, it's a little bit higher. You just put some like foam as a divider in between and divided it into two separate enclosures. So yeah, it's kind of a cool concept. I'm trying to decide if this is a little bit too tight, I guess it's approximately 15 gallons for a crested gecko. I always say that a 10 gallon is too small. And I usually go with the 20 gallon minimum, but 15 gallons is an awful. I'll probably keep them in here just for a little bit of time, uh, and then I might upgrade them later on. We'll just see how functional it is uh, when I'm dealing with larger amounts of animals. I really like the concept. I don't know if I'll actually end up keeping it or trashing it, just using it as a regular enclosure in the future. We'll see, but for now, at least for the next couple nights, I'll keep them in here and uh, just see how I feel that they feel space-wise. Uh, definitely needs a clean, so that's gonna happen before anything else. Like I said, they're both males. This one's really, really strong looking and strong feeling. It's actually a pretty decent size for an adult crested gecko. He's got a strong stripe down his back. He does have a frog butt, but as you know in crested geckos, that's not, not really a bad thing. The majority of crested geckos in the wild don't actually have their tails. And then here's the second crested gecko. This one's a little bit smaller, uh, a little bit thinner. And this one has something I've never quite seen before in a crested gecko. It's got these like ridges on its skull. It's kind of something that I typically associate with gargoyle geckos. It's very weird looking. I don't actually know if that's a crested gecko natural trait. It's just a thing that they have, 
or if he's like a little bit thin or dehydrated, he's, nothing else about him looks or feels dehydrated. He looks good everywhere else, but uh, it is a little bit odd. I've never seen that on a crusty gecko before. Um, so let me know in the comments what you think that is, and I'll go ahead and do my own research and let you guys know next time uh, you see this guy, whether it be on the site or in another video. Um, so it's either something that's like really cool and makes him look kind of dragony, or it's something I need to be concerned about and uh, look into more. So I guess we'll find out. This one does also have a complete tail, which is uh, pretty sweet. He's he's colored like ash, like he, he looks like a piece of like burned wood or something. It's just kind of a funny color. But what do I know? I'm colorblind anyways. Maybe he's like bright yellow with purple polka dots. Next up we've got a second ball python. Uh, this one is a adult female. It came in this 40 gallon, uh, which you like can't even see through. I mean, as far as like her actual care and setup, it doesn't look awful. There's actually a whole bunch more things in here. I took them all out so I could stack something else in there. But she had hides and branches and you know, like everything that a ball python needs. But this last, like there's so many water stains. I mean, I guess that means he was missing it well, but I could just not stand and let my own glass like get that hard to see. And then there's, on the outside, there's like, Paint. It's like he just started to paint it with like a thin clear layer. I don't know what. But uh, her care actually didn't look uh, awful. I'm struggling with this bag. Let me focus on this bag instead of getting, instead of talking about the glass. Okay. Salmonella, my old friend. Again, she's a little bit thinner than uh, I'd like to keep my ball pythons at personally. Uh, but she's really not bad, um, and it shouldn't take too long to get her up to weight, assuming I can get her to take frozen thawed pretty fast. Uh, being an adult, it might be even more of a challenge than it will be uh, on the little guy. Uh, so we'll see how that goes. Uh, she is in shed right now. She's very blue, and um, her, her coat is all a little bit dull, so she'll probably look a little bit better when she comes out. Also, this is like my fourth 40 gallon that has stickers. I don't know why it's only the 40 gallons that I have that have stickers on them. Um, but I always kind of leave the stickers there. I don't know, it's kind of kind of funny to have like American Tattoo Society and then a band off the wall sticker. It's kind of cool. I'm probably gonna scrape off all this paint. I don't know if the stickers will survive or not, but if I can keep them there, I will just because, I don't know, it's kind of fun. Oh, also this 40 gallon didn't come with a lid. Let's see if I can find the lid it came with. And this was the lid it had. It was, it's just like a piece of wood that's cut to fit. And then there's two holes and then he has two pieces of screen like fit on top of it really nicely. Uh, I'm definitely gonna fix that up. She's probably gonna be a temporary tub until I actually buy an actual lid, but I'll, 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 I'll get her a sliding lid uh, instead of something quite this makeshift. So uh, yeah, there she is. I'm gonna go ahead and put her back in the bag and then move this tank over to the cleaning side uh, to be cleaned out. Next up, I've got uh, this boa. So this is not the one that uh, was damaged uh, with the glass. And this one is actually in pretty amazing condition. Uh, he's definitely not overweight or underweight. He's that nice square that you want to see in boas. Uh, we are just in boa town right now, including the two that we got today. We currently have like six boas in right now. Not just like boas, like the boa family, but like uh, from the genus boa. I think all boa imperators are different uh, locales and morphs and everything. Um, so yeah, I've been, I've been really having fun with them. Uh, I'm sure there's some up on the site right now by the time that this video uh, is released. Uh, so you can check those out in the iCard uh, if you would like to. This here is a hypo boa, and all that, that means is that all its coloration is going to be a little bit lighter than you're going to see on a normal uh, BCI, uh, namely the spaces in between the saddles are a much more sandy, lighter color than you would see on a normal uh, common BCI. Uh, so that's pretty cool. The guy that I got him from did get him from a reputable breeder, and he is het uh, for the jungle morph, so uh, if anyone's out there is getting into some of the breeding, that might be of value to you. But if you're just a keeper, that doesn't really matter. Uh, it's still really cool and really pretty boa. And this animal uh, was actually living in a 20 gallon, but it's just about at the size where it really should be upgraded to a larger enclosure. So he included a 40 gallon uh, for me to keep it in, again, uh, without a lid. So uh, we're gonna need to figure out something about that. Uh, but regardless, I've got a second 40 gallon here. Uh, there's nothing in here right now except for some old trash, which I'll need to clean out, so it'll go over with the other cleaning ones. But hey, at least you can like see through the glass. That's, that's nice. Um, so yeah, we got a hypo boa. That's pretty sweet. This enclosure 
is for a tortoise, a specifically a Russian tortoise. This is awesome. This is the uh, first tortoise uh, that Radiant Reptilia has had up on the Radiant Reptilia site, uh, although I've worked with them extensively before. I actually have a Russian tortoise, uh, Arthur. He appears in uh, my Wild Caught and Imported uh, Animals video. Um, and I just love him to death, so this is a species I really enjoy and I'm glad to, uh, to have, have another one in here. It is homemade, but I commend this guy's effort into just making something so quality. Uh, it's very nice wood. This is obviously a tortoise pen. Uh, they're very common. Uh, there is a little thing up here which you can mount the lights on so you can get his heat and UVB from there. It's a 4x2, so it's honestly uh, more than enough for an adult Russian tortoise. They are not a species that gets uh, very big. Uh, it's always really useful when you get enclosures like this because this is something that I can just use again and again and again. You know, even after this tortoise is gone, uh, for the next tortoise that we get in, assuming it's around this size, you know, this pen will definitely be put to use uh, numerous times. Of course, with cleaning as needed in between. Uh, but yeah, it's just really excellent and really helpful for, uh, for my line of work, uh, for sure. So here's our next pickup. This one did not come with an enclosure, uh, although I can attest that it was a very nice enclosure. It was actually such a nice enclosure that he wanted to take it with him to Houston uh, for the future. But this is a tiny little carpet python. It's uh, just a 2019 hatchling, I think just four months old. Uh, so it's very, very young, definitely has a long way to go. We had one in ages back uh, that I got to work with before uh, Radiant Reptilia. And uh, that's really when I started to fall in love with them. And then as you guys know, we have the uh, two uh, large adult uh, carpet pythons. The adult pair is actually starting their breeding cycling this week. And if everything goes according to plan, uh, we should hopefully have some baby carpet pythons just like this guy uh, in the spring. But for now, uh, I'm guessing by the time this video is up, this guy is probably already up on the site. Uh, if he is, you can check out him or whatever other uh, pythons we have with the eye card in the corner. Moving on to our next animal, so we've got a pair of leopard geckos. Uh, these enclosures are actually really good as well. Uh, they are almost identical to how I do my leopard gecko enclosures. Uh, I almost always do uh, paper towel as substrate. Uh, that's what this guy did as well. The tubs are an adequate size. Everything got shuffled around and crumpled up uh, during transit. But when I first saw them, they were all looking very nice, so don't, don't let that uh, dissuade you. Our first one here is uh, a pretty looking gecko. She is actually just about to shed. It's actually, I can see the shed splitting uh, on her arm right now. So as soon as I'm done here, I'm gonna make sure that this enclosure uh, has a proper humid hide and she can go and do her shedding. Uh, but she's definitely some kind of albino is the first thing uh, I noticed. My knee jerk reaction is rainwater albino, um, but I don't know that for certain. I'll definitely do some more research on her and uh, figure out exactly what I think she is. Uh, and then she's also eclipsed. She's got the eclipse eyes, just the style of black eyes. Uh, so that's another gene that she carries. So she's pretty cool. Uh, this is a very young gecko. I believe, I, I have her written down somewhere. I believe she's a 2018 gecko. Uh, so she's still got a long ways to go. And she has a perfect tail, nice plump tail. But she's not overweight too. She doesn't have any calcium sacs. Uh, so she's just in excellent condition. And uh, I can't wait to see how pretty she is uh, after she finishes up her shed. And then on this side of me, uh, we have our other leopard gecko. I'm pretty sure this is just a normal leopard gecko. Now it looks like this guy has just a tiny bit of a calcium sac, so I'll definitely cut down on the calcium I give him uh, until that goes away. But other than that, he's in great condition. I was also cracking up at the enclosure items here. I mean, it all works, but it's just funny. I love seeing just like people do random crap for their reptiles. They took an exotero background and snapped it up and like made it into like a climbing perch or a branch or something. I mean, it works, it's just it's just kind of funny. Um, so I was cracking up about that. So yeah, that's them. Uh, they are awesome, looking in great condition. And uh, again, my guess is that by the time this video is out, they're probably up on the site. Uh, you, regardless, you can see whatever leopard geckos we have available uh, with the iCard in the corner. One more animal here before we get to the uh, big boa. This is one that I'm really, really excited uh, to be working with. This is an adult male uh, hognose snake, and oh my gosh, he's just stunning. There's something about normal morph hognoses that is just so amazing looking. I don't know, there's something about their patterning that is so freaking stunning. I mean, it's just contrast and warmth, and then their belly is that pitch black. Oh, why would you want to ruin that with albinism? That is awesome. This guy is three years old, so he is full grown. Uh, this is about as big as adult uh, male hognoses get. Females will get a good bit larger. Uh, but this is about as big as an adult male uh, is going to get. This guy did come with an enclosure, a smaller tank somewhere 
I'm not sure where it is and I'm gonna get it out. It's not very impressive. He'll definitely be getting an enclosure upgrade, but uh, as far as his health and everything goes, he is just looking absolutely phenomenal. Uh, he's strong, he's got muscle tone, and this is the uh, only other snake that was supposedly on Frozen Thawed, um, which makes me extremely happy because Hoggos, as you know, are one of the pickier snakes. It can be harder to switch them over than, uh, than some other snake species. So I'm glad that hopefully my job will be a little bit easier with this guy than it will be with uh, everyone else. He's also wanted to just say that he has a really, really upturned snout. Like, it's a very, very sharp hog nose. Like, some hog noses, they kind of just goes up a little bit at the end, like a little bit of a point. Some of them are almost pointy instead of, instead of hog-like. But this guy has an extremely sharp, sharp point. I'm, I say this about, like, every herp that I get now. Not every herp, but I say it about so many of them. Uh, <laughs> I guess there's a chance that he might just become one of my animals. We'll see. Just because he's so pretty and so cool looking. Uh, I don't know. So I've basically emptied out the car now. All that's left is the uh, big enclosure. And we can look, take a look at our last animal. Very large, uh, seems to be obese. Oh, what? Here, wait. Let me put it down over here. Oh. She is a heavy girl. I wonder how much she weighs. She whiz. Yeah, unlike the other boa, this boa is not a square. This boa is a circle. It is shaped like a ball python. Uh, boas are not supposed to be shaped like ball pythons. She also has some wrinkly skin, so uh, her humidity has been a little bit too low. Uh, we'll get that fixed as soon as we can. But of course, the most notable characteristic about this boa is the fact that it's got a pretty bad gash uh, running down its head and neck. Thankfully, it seems to be very shallow. It seems more like a sharp edge of glass actually just scraped off like the top layer of skin as opposed to like cutting into her. Uh, which is definitely, definitely much preferred uh, to to the alternative. She's got all sorts of different things that are going to be fixing up and healing. I'm going to go ahead and leave her be now, but um, yeah, she's going to be a piece of work. <laughs> Thankfully, she seems to be a very friendly snake, despite going through everything she's been through, um, which is so much better because that means that she'll be just so much easier to work with as we go through uh, the rehab process with her. Um, so yeah, this is probably going to be a long road uh, for this girl. We're probably going to be with her for a long time. I did get her enclosure, but again, as she broke through the glass doors, there is no doors on this. He uh, had makeshift put up like these plastic panels and then just like put heavy things next to them to keep her from pushing them out. So yeah, note to self, don't use glass doors. And I really don't mean to be like blaming the guy for this, because I don't know that I necessarily would have known that. Uh, maybe it's obvious to bigger snake keepers, but it would not necessarily have been my first inclination to like not use real glass, uh, especially when it looks so much nicer. But as you can see, it's, it can like really do some damage. Like this snake's life is kind of jacked up now. Uh, and hopefully, I, I have faith that she'll, that she'll be able to recover from this. Um, like I said, the wounds all seem really shallow and I, I think they'll be able to be fixed up uh, just with time. But it's gonna be a process for sure, and I'm sure that she's actually in a good amount of pain uh, right now. So uh, it's all gonna be a long process, uh, but hopefully we can get her fixed up. Uh, my first priority is the hardware store. I'm gonna build a pair of swinging doors instead of sliding doors, uh, just because I prefer swinging to sliding anyways. And then she's probably gonna have a whole video just about her and about her recovery process. I don't know if that'll, I'll release that like halfway through, or if I'll release that uh, after she's all fixed up. I'm not sure, but I'm definitely gonna film uh, my treatment with her and just some of the things that I'm doing uh, to help her recover. I don't know what the next step is gonna be for her, whether she will go up uh, on the site as a rescue, whether I bring her to a private individual just because she's been through so much. Uh, I don't really know how it's gonna work. That's gonna depend probably largely on her recovery and how well it is. Uh, if it recovers very well though, there's a very, ch very good chance that she will be available to adopt uh, on the rescues page, of course, not the not the shop reptiles page.
this is really janky. Uh, I'm having a hard time doing it super straight with my cast arm because I don't really have as much grip as I usually do. Uh, so, the skill saw is coming off janky and I'm cleaning up as much as I can with the jigsaw. Uh, plus that blade is really dull which isn't helping anybody. Uh, so I think it'll work, it's certainly not my best work. But at the same time, it kind of fits the rest of the enclosure because the whole thing is kind of janky. So the idea is we're going to have two doors that sit something like that. That seems pretty good. Also, for the first time in like literally weeks, my wrist is actually starting to hurt. I think all the vibrating is probably probably making everything uh, feel a little bit because the saws vibrate a lot. So uh, hopefully nothing too bad is going on in there. We did it. Oh. It has been a long couple of days. So there you have it guys. Uh, we've officially finished uh, what I'm going to affectionately refer to as a piece of garbage. This is the jankiest enclosure that I have ever made. Some of my worst workmanship like ever really. Uh, it's, it's, it's quite sad. So first off, I was starting with a body that was already kind of makeshift thrown together. Uh, to the guy's credit, it was the first time he'd ever uh, custom built anything, so he was he was still learning uh, how to do all the stuff he did. Because of my hand, uh, all the cuts were really, really crooked. None of them were smooth or straight or flat. They were all just really, really bad all the way around. The doors rub a little bit when they close, and it turns out that the two the two latches I bought, like the two the two latches and bolts, they're two different different sizes. <laughs> I don't know how I did that. So those don't even match. But I think that a piece of garbage uh, will be quite functional for the boa. It doesn't seem to be any issues with the functionality. And frankly, the boa is not going to care. Uh, it's actually really dirty in there. And my next step is just going to be sanitizing it and getting any traces of, uh, of you know its previous life out of there, just in case there's any uh, viruses or illnesses. Obviously, I've begun treatment with the wound, uh, so any sort of infections that I could have been carrying before, I don't want those to be getting back in there. I want to be fighting off those as hard as I could. I will obviously be documenting her treatment as I work to get her all healed up, uh, but you can't really expect any video from that for quite a while because that wound is just going to take time to heal, and I'm not going to, and I don't, because that wound is going to take so much time to heal. And uh, honestly, I'd like to let the next time for you guys to see her uh, to be sort of the before and after video where I can kind of compare, you know, where I got her from. Uh, yesterday to where she is uh, today. Well, we picked up 11 animals and built uh, a piece of garbage. Uh, I'm Ethan and I guess this is what Radiant Reptilia is now. See you in the next video.